Well, welcome everybody to Mining for More. My name is Becca Mowry and I'm here with the lovely Dina Merchant. And we are so excited that you're tuning in um, to Mining for More. Dina and I are really passionate about the word of God. We love, especially going through, um, just intensely going through a book of the Bible. And uh, what's better than starting with Jesus, right in the gospels, right? Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's so great. And so we are going to be in this season of going through the book of Mark. And so uh, really our heart is that we'd be able to receive the word of God as we read it. And, um, and, and just as we guide this discussion, you'll kind of see really the discussion is going to be guided by words that jump out, maybe a phrase or a sentence, or as you read um, a, a certain situation or a response from Jesus or the disciples or people who are around Jesus, maybe an idea pops into your head, and then really learning to discern the voice of God as you read scripture and discern the character of God within the words of scripture. So we're really excited you're here. We're going to take a, a chapter and we're going to break it in. Each chapter is going to be broken into two sections. So this is going to be Mark chapter one, and we're going to go through the first, I think, 28 verses of Mark. Uh, and then there'll be Mark chapter one, part two. So uh, I would encourage you, make sure you have your Bible with you. <clears throat> and um, I always say have a, like a notebook or a pencil um, and uh, we're just going to dive right in and we're going to try to keep these to about 20 minutes so they're digestible little pieces you can even listen to in the car or, you know, as you're doing the dishes or cooking a meal at home or driving home from work or whatever it is. So we're just really glad you're here. So, Dina, I'm going to turn it over to you if you want to pray for us and then take us into the first part of this chapter. That'd be great. I would love to. I'm, I'm so excited. I love the book of Mark. It's just great. I love just hearing about Jesus and there's no better way to get to know him better than to just read about yeah. what his life was like and what he did and how he like worked and ministered and loved people around him. So before we read, I always just take a moment to pray because this is God's word and he needs to help us understand it. So yeah. we'll just pray and ask God to speak to us. And then I'm going to start reading in Mark chapter one. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you that it's true and ask that you would speak to us right now, that you would come and just give us ears to hear and help us to understand what your word is saying. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Mark chapter one, verses one. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. It is written. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he'll prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they went out, they confessed their sins, and when he was baptized, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens split apart and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. The spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals and angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last. He announced, the kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Picking up in verse 16 of chapter one. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. 
At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the Sabbath synagogue to begin to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an, ev by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The mm -hmm. evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked one another, Who is this? A new teaching? And with the authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. So that's a lot. That's a big mouthful. Yeah. Right? There's, There's so around. many things happening in here. So, Dina, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to try to point out just a few things. We are just going to scrape the surface on yeah. you know, what, what, what is in here. But what were some of the things initially that stood out to you as we read this? Well, I just love how Mark starts out. I mean, like he just comes right out of the gate with facts, mm -hmm. not feelings, but facts, right? He goes and he says, this is who Jesus is, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, he's the Messiah. He is the son of God. And then he goes right to scripture, right? Mm -hmm. He says, hey, this is exactly what God had prophesied back when Isaiah was here. And he, and these, this is what the, the Israelites would have known these verses. Like, yes. what I love about it is just John the Baptist was instructed through God to start right where the people were. They yes. knew this. This was, this was not new information for them they, they this is what they had been holding on to mm -hmm. his words from isaiah so he's like speaking right into where they're at and saying hey you remember what isaiah said this is it it's yes the time. and i just love that it's it's facts and we can look yes. back in isaiah and we can say clearly this is what he said 400 plus years before yes. he never came on the scene. Right? You, know, you know what I think is so interesting about that too, is when you read the gospels, we have to recognize that, you know, this isn't necessarily like the documentation Mark, like documenting this in a diary as they go, right? They believe the book of Mark was probably written in like 80, maybe 50 years after Christ. Yeah. It's the um, earliest gospel written. Earliest gospel written. Right. And, and a lot of the disciples and the people who saw Jesus they didn't recognize him necessarily as the Messiah. There were those chosen few, right? Like John the Baptist here. They had the scriptures. They had the Torah. They had the law of the prophets. They had these words. But because Jesus was never prophesied necessarily as a suffering servant, they didn't recognize that their new Messiah was going to be a suffering servant. That, you know, Jesus is this peasant, you know, from the region of Galilee of all places, right? And, and. He was this peasant. Of course, he can't be the savior. There's something special about him, but of course he can't be the Messiah. And it was after they experienced Jesus personally, yeah. after they experienced the power of his presence, the authority of his teaching, walked with him. They received the gift of the mm -hmm. spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. Then as they reflected back in scripture, yeah. they saw him now as the messiah they're like oh my goodness how did we not see this before we didn't see this before but now that we know him we see him in his word and that is how we're to read scripture right, right? but becca that is us too is it not so much that is so us much. as people right yeah but sometimes we look back and go well how could i have missed that yeah how did i not see that that's what he was doing that's that's who he was yes. and it's like it's what do they say hindsight is 2020 yes, right yeah and that was the same for the disciples mm -hmm. and the other part i love is just what what john says is that he says prepare the way for the lord's coming clear mm -hmm. the road for him and i love these words mm -hmm. they're verbs these are not like passive words where you're just like yeah. oh, okay i'm just gonna sit around no this is like we have we have something to do to prepare yes. still to clear. 
yeah. still like we are always preparing for something if you think about it there's something we're preparing for the way of the spirit we're preparing right. for the kingdom of god it's here it's near right. but it's active so then i'm saying to myself, yes. what am i doing to prepare for jesus what am i doing mm. to clear the and what do i need to clear mm-hmm. sometimes i need to clear things out of my life sometimes it's it's sin sometimes mm-hmm. it's things that i'm worried about or something that is just not healthy and not allowing me to focus on on God and Jesus coming, right? Because he's yes. coming and he's yes. here. And I don't want to miss that. I can miss it if I'm not focused and actively pursuing and preparing the way for him to come. Yes, the Lord that. is always at work. He's always moving. He's always speaking. He's always doing something. And in my busyness, I see it. Like I, I, I can be so distracted or so discouraged or, you know, kind of, keep mm-hmm. my like nose to the grindstone. Right. And, and all of a sudden I, I realized, wait a minute, but, but Jesus was doing something amazing this whole time. How did I not see it? I was distracted. And so yeah. it's this, this tuning into the spirit. And I think that like is so relevant to like, as we move on and we look at like the baptism oh my goodness, of yes. Jesus, right? So like Jesus gets baptized, God affirms his identity. Mm-hmm. And it's because Jesus knows his identity as the son of God. He knows his identity. He knows his purpose. And when we know who we are in Christ and we have that security of who God made us to be, who we are, what we're here and what in the world we're here for, like our identity, we can receive that calling. Then we can walk through life. We can walk through anything in life, right? Jesus walked through suffering. He walked through persecution. He walked Right, right into darkness like i look at like the evil spirits that he cast out he feared nothing nope. because he knew his calling in life right and, and i, I love just that. love that yes and i also was thinking too that when so when jesus gets baptized right there's a couple things in that little section that really just caught my eye mm. first is it's it's you see the trinity involved in this in this moment and that's a word that we use but mm-hmm. it's not a biblical word but it's a biblical term it's it's Mm -hmm. truly um you know obviously it's right from the scriptures but here's the holy spirit coming upon jesus the son of god with god the father speaking which is just Mm -hmm. a beautiful picture right of the three in one and then i love that that god says this is my dearly loved son and i he brings me great joy and jesus hadn't done any miracles at this point yet i mean jesus hadn't like um, healed people or fed people. Yeah, this is the start of his ministry here. His, and, and so God mm-hmm. is saying, this is my son and I love him. Mm. He brings me great joy, not because of what he is doing, but because of who he is. Mm. And I think all of us need to hear that, that we bring God great joy, not because of what we're doing, but because of who we are. We are children of the living God. We are sons and daughters. And we don't have to try to prove ourselves to God. We, he, he's, we bring great joy to him. Yes. But just such, ourselves. such a good word. That's such a powerful word. Gina. That'll preach, Gina. Great joy. That'll we'll right. preach. That'll <laughs> preach. I love that. But that's what I, when we were reading it the first, when we were just reading it right now. And that's what I love about God's word is sometimes it's not even anything I've written down yet. I'm mm-hmm. hearing it as you're reading it. And I'm, it's, his word is alive and it's, it's active. And when we ask him to speak, he will. And he just Oh, absolutely. I always tell people, you can read the gospels. I try to commit to at least reading the gospels through once a year, at least it's a minimum of once a year. And um, it's amazing. I'm like, how, how did I not see this before? I've read this book a hundred times. I know. Sometimes I go, wait, has that always been there? I'm like, did I Yes. This, is a, this is a new version, <laughs> but it's yeah. always been there. I just, I'll tell you what, I yeah. sometimes will go back to like, this is my oldest Bible and I love it. And, um, and I'll like read different versions, like given the chronological Bible. And you're right. I'm like, this just has to be worded different. How did yeah. I not? How did yeah. I not this wasn't this there before. <laughs> this is, yeah. but yeah. that, I love that. And I yeah. just thought he was saying, I, yeah. you bring me great joy. Yeah. And that alone should just give us such peace yes. feeling. Yeah, you know, that God loves us, not yes. because of what we're doing, but because and of God wants to be with us. You know, Jesus, he gets called into his ministry and then um, and then he was sent away into a wilderness. To be I know <laughs> I was going to say, you know, as you said that, like, here's Jesus like this. He's on this high mountaintop yeah. moment with God and the spirit is coming and he's like, 
ah. and then, like, this is my dearly loved son, yeah. great joy. And then he walks into the wilderness and he's being tempted. Yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness, couldn't even have like a little holiday or like one week vacation or something. Nope, right away, compelled yeah. to go in. And the spirit compelled him. So sometimes like we might think, oh, I'm going through something hard. And this might be like outside of God's will. Sometimes God has us in tough places because he wants to meet us there and he's He's shaping us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we need to um, not be as caught off guard. I remember telling Brian at one point, I was like, you know what? I am, I'm, I'm going to sick of being surprised by difficult situations. Yes. I feel like if we are always surprised by difficult situations, our whole life, we'll just feel like we're just reacting and we're always being caught off guard. And I just feel like I said, I said to Brian, I was like, I just want to like start anticipating Lord, if you've called me into this area, if you've called me to speak to this person, if you've called me to walk this road of forgiveness, if you've called me to turn the other cheek, if you've called me to consider myself blessed when I'm persecuted. Oh, by the way, all of those things, Jesus has called Christians to. So yeah, if he's true. called us to that, we should expect that. Yeah. We should expect and, that Lord, you've called me into this new season of ministry and the Lord, you've called me into this relationship. Lord, you've called me to walk this road of whatever it is. And it's like, we should immediately expect like frustration, loneliness, um, challenge. Yeah. But you know, the cool thing too is Becky, if you think about that, you, um, we also know that God is like, that's his plan for us and he's yeah. gone ahead and mm -hmm. he is paving the way for us mm -hmm. and we don't go by ourselves. We go with his spirit. Like, Absolutely. You said. like so we Absolutely. don't have to worry about like, what am I going to do? Because God's presence is there with us. Right. And yeah. so if we have that, if we're walking in that faith, instead of being like, oh no, oh no, yes. it's a whole different yes. uh, perspective. But we have yep. to have that mindset that whatever we're going through, God mm -hmm. has already ordained this for us. We're his children and he's not surprised by anything that we go through. Right? Yes. And um, then he calls, Jesus calls his disciples, right? And what do they do? They yeah. drop their nets. Yeah, they drop it. I mean, they drop everything. And I love the fact that he uses again, terminology that they understand so jesus always talks to us in the way that we understand mm -hmm. he's going to meet us right where we are i mean here he is with john and in the boat and they're fishing right and what does he say to them come follow me and i'll make you fishers of men right? yes we will fish for people he's like i'm just going to use what you what you already know and we're just going to explain the kingdom of God in the way that you understand it. Right. But the kingdom, I was thinking about how the kingdom of God is here and we don't want to miss that. Like yes. you were talking about that before, how easy it is for us to get like focused on what we're doing and we can miss hearing Jesus say, follow me. Yes. And, and I, I love that parallel. Like you were saying, like he's prepared us and he's using terminology, which we know, you know, when I read this and we talk about like reading scripture for in, in new ways and the Lord bringing things out, the words dropped their nets. Yeah. And then again, where it says they left their father Zebedee. And what was really put on my heart that the Lord put on my heart through this was that they left the old way behind. Jesus didn't just say, call them into doing something different. He called them into a whole new revolutionary way of being. And he called them from being fishers of this world to yeah. fishers of God's world, yeah. fishers in God's kingdom. And they left their old way. And I was, I was just like drawn to the, the Lord, just like speaking in my heart and just saying, I am calling you to leave behind the ways of this world. I am calling you to, to pick up your cross and follow me. I am calling you to my way of doing things. The world says, retaliate and revenge, mm. drop the nets and move out in forgiveness. The world says you need to stand up and fight for things. I say you carry the peace of the gospel yeah. and it's like, drop your nets. And I just keep feeling like, you know, if we're hurt, if we're angry, if we're yes. frustrated, if we're yes. whatever it is, right? Yep. Just saying drop your nets there will be no fruit that will be lasting that you will catch with those nets. Yeah. yeah. The fruit that is lasting that you will catch will be caught in the ways of the kingdom. And now he says, come and follow me. And I'm going to teach you the ways of the kingdom. I'm going to teach you a divine way 
to fish. Yeah. And when our disciples do fish with Jesus the right way, it's not in this gospel. Mm -hmm. It's the same story, mm -hmm. but different. Their, their net is so full of fish, they can't even yes. lift it up yeah. into the boat. Yes. I think it might be in Luke. And they are just like amazed. They're like, oh my goodness, we can't even hold all this fish. That's what God does when we actually let Absolutely. him lead and guide. And we actually are fishing for mm -hmm. the right, with the right perspective. Yes, right absolutely. I absolutely love that. And then we have this final story in the last few minutes. What jumped out at you as you read this final story, which oh. is pretty amazing, right? So Jesus is in the team, did the synagogue and people are like, he has authority. Yeah. So we've heard the law. We've heard the words of the prophets. Yeah. Maybe we've been comforted, yeah. we've been instructed, right? It's not that it's bad, but they said there is an authority here mm -hmm. that is stirring something, bringing something in me alive you know as you read this Dina what were some of the things that jumped well, out there was just one word I think that just grabbed me and I circled it this is what I do a lot of times I have a pen or pencil like you were saying and I just mark my bible with with things that are similar like themes or or words I think that are just like key for me at that moment and the word amazed and amazement mm. and I thought these people were amazed at Jesus they were amazed at what they heard what mm -hmm. they saw what they were experiencing and I just love that the amazement gripped the audience. And I thought, mm -hmm. I want to be amazed. Mm -hmm. I want to be like, wow, Jesus, look what you're doing. Wow, look what you can do. Wow, look what you've said. I want that amazement mm -hmm. in my own life because I think yeah. we can get amazed about a lot of things that don't aren't worthy of our amazement. Like if you think about how sometimes a, a new little invention or something will make us so crazy. Wow, did you see this thing? It's so amazing. And I'm thinking, but God is. I mean, we should be amazed at Jesus. And the and thing is, the things is. that we are amazed about, just like you're talking about, the things that we find amazement in, we can't help but tell. I'm always telling people like the newest, greatest, amazing book I'm reading, right. you know, or, oh my gosh, I saw this movie, or have you tried this incredible, you know, product, or whatever it is, yeah. this right. recipe, right? Like, I want to tell people about yeah. these things. And, um, and they're just like, they're even a little trivial some mm -hmm. of these things but they're fun and they bring us to life and we get excited and let's be honest you and I are like um over the top positivity so yeah. we're probably amazed <laughs> by a lot of things we are amazed by a lot of things <laughs> I, know. I know but but when we are when we're amazed by Jesus mm -hmm. when we experience Jesus yeah. in a new way when we experience the power of the spirit mm -hmm. the authority that Jesus car carries in the spirit we can't help but tell mm -hmm. We can't help but follow. Yeah. People flocked after Jesus. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think in the church, that's what we need to be a, a little more hungry for. Mm -hmm. And I would say, if, if you want to be more hungry for the spirit, read the book of Acts too. Yeah. It oh, makes you come alive in the spirit. It makes you hungry for the things of the spirit because it's the things of the spirit as we experience the power, the yeah. authority, it is undeniable and we can't help but tell. Yeah. And the last, the very last verse that we read, it says the news about Jesus spread quickly throughout mm -hmm. the entire region of Galilee. Well, it was spreading because the people were amazed and because mm -hmm. people were talking about, they didn't have internet or TV or anything like mm -hmm. that. The news was spreading because people were saying what they were experiencing, what they saw Jesus doing. And, what and they you know what they weren't saying? They weren't saying, hey, listen to this incredible new theological principle. Listen. Oh my goodness, I have this new way of interpreting the law. Look at this. No, what were they saying? The amazement of Jesus. That's right. The person of Jesus. Yeah. We need to stop talking about Christianity and we need to start talking about Christ. Amen. That'll and be break. amazed at Christ. Yes. And that is what will change people forever. Amen. And yeah. people will flock to him because of it. So I'm just, I'm, a, I'm pumped about this. This is We're great. Amazed. This is We're great. amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. <laughs> Jesus Beth, what is if so you good. close us in prayer today and yeah. talk about, yeah, help us get amazed. Did you say me or you? I couldn't I said it. you. Oh, I will absolutely close us in prayer. I'll close us in prayer as we wrap up this session. Lord, we just thank you uh, that when you move, it is undeniable. And I just pray mm -hmm. that as we continue to mine through your word, that you would open our eyes, that you would open our hearts, Lord, that we would continue to be amazed at who you are and how you are moving. And Lord, would you put such a hunger in us to just follow hard after you and to talk about our Christ to everybody that we know.
Yes. Lord, move us on in the things of the spirit. We ask this in mm. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thanks everyone for tuning in and we will see you next time as we go through Mark chapter one, part two. Have an yep. awesome day.